the City of Angels. No angels here anymore, unless you count Angel Mendoza. Target moving south on her. Angel runs a tattoo salon in Hollywood. He's a recon mutant with six hands. Angel gave me this. X1 Alpha, you got yourself a code 7. This is the LAPD. Nice work, Wookie. Now where was I? Oh yeah. Big LA. Mutants, gangsters, chem lords, whacked out cyborgs, high tech, this and that. We got it. Remember, kid, serve, protect, survive. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Future Cop LAPD, the spiritual sequel to the Jungle and Desert Strike games. Once was known as Future Strike and then got retooled with a police theme. No one knows why. Anyway, let's begin the single player mode. This is X1 Alpha, LAPD's best weapon in the war against crime. The Crime Lord's edge and firepower is over. Now you've got the weapons to serve, protect, and survive. X1 Alpha can go almost anywhere. When precise movement is required, use the action button. When you're under fire, your best friend is the jink. Give the bad guys a moving target. If you've really got a motor, press the change target and action buttons at the same time. Voila! When to do it is up to you. Your HUD shows the usual stuff. Armor status, weapons load, and ammo count. On the radar, follow the green arrow toward the green diamond. That's your target. Get rid of one target and a new one will take its place. Listen, green dots identify switches and elevators. You'll need the action button to use them. Red dots? They're the bad guys. Low on ammo or about to die? Get to a yellow triangle. It's a reloader. Hit the action button. If you're wondering about the white triangle, you're not as bright as I thought. It's you, baby. If you need to catch your breath, check out the satellite map. Whatever's glowing is your next objective. Now, about cooperative, it's simple. If your partner gets hurt, you get hurt. Okay? Try to stay alive, Ace. I need a date to the policeman's ball. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in our crime war is enter our name. I think we all know what that's going to be by this point in time. Let's clear that out of the way. And we'll go with... M! No, that is not what I mean. This is weird that you have to move the cursor with the um, the directional button without pressing any of the, you know, confirm buttons until you're actually finished. Slightly weird, but who cares? Not me! I'd probably be quicker to go the other way, huh? Yes, I will put underscores after my name. <laughs> I'm just that important, I require underscores. I also forgot it went through the entire lowercase alphabet first. Hoop a doop. Right, there we go. That is my name, don't forget it. I'm going to stick on normal, because while I can beat the game on difficult, it is exactly what it says it is, and there are some really nasty levels towards the end. So we're not going to do that. Our first mission, our first case, if you will. Griffith Park. Let's go there. X1 Alpha, X1 Alpha, Code 3. Proceed to the observatory. Officers are down. Hostile air and armor units confirmed. Be advised. Civilians are caught in the crossfire and the situation is rated X. That's why we need you, darling. Your target is one Miles Mysterio. He's converted the park telescope into a plasma cannon. Gets his kicks bringing down commercial aircraft. Bag two this morning. The department wants this assassin taken out. That's a code 7X. No assistance needed. He's all yours. Okay, so there's our briefing. A nutter with a plasma cannon destroys commercial planes. Not really sure why they call him an assassin. Since assassins are fairly, you know, subtle. And he has a giant plasma cannon, but I digress. Our next uh, decision is the weapons to bring on our mission. You get three different weapons. A gun weapon, a heavy weapon, and a special weapon. For the first mission in the game, unfortunately, you can't choose any of the other weapons. You are stuck with the basics. A minigun, some missiles, and a mortar. The gun weapon is fired with the square button, 
has the most ammunition and is generally the one you're going to use the most. The heavy weapon is fired with the X button. It is generally a bit more, a bit rarer, but more useful, more, I don't know, standard than the special weapon, which is very rare. You have very little shots in, but will do horrendous damage to things. So let's get started with the weapons we are forced to take. Here we are then. As explained in the tutorial, you're supposed to head for the green diamonds, but first I want to murder huge crowds of people by shooting them. It automatically switches to this crowd control camera when you get to these situations. And you need to blow up this hut over here to stop them spawning. Anyway, I'm going to leave this area because there's nothing to gain here. Well, except for murdering. <laughs> You dare betray the law! It will destroy you with giant robots. Anyway, towards the green diamond then. And our first target, the green diamond here, is a giant turret blocking the entryway to the observatory. Proceed to the west and head for that gate. That's your way in. As she says, there's a gate. You presume wrong. The gun is in your way. Take it out. Okay, here's the gun she's talking about. A giant red turret. You can pretty much just strafe around it, and one mortar will take it out. Just like that. Constantly spawning dudes. Let's murderize them. Let's turn them into the paste of tomorrow. <laughs> there are a lot of enemies just straight off the bat that try to destroy you, but they can't do huge amounts of damage to you, so you can get away with sort of bumbling about a bit as you try and get your to hang of it. Blah, blah, to grips with it. That's what I'm going for. You're a turret. You need to stop existing. Anyway. Let's get the gate out of the way. Again, a mortar should do it pretty quickly. Alert. Now, you'll notice we also uh, acquire targets as we face them, like this. A little laser sight will come out and lock on. You have no real control over that, but you can change the target it's locked onto if it's locked onto the wrong thing. So, say you wanted to change it to, I don't know, something that's shooting you rather than something that isn't. You hit the R1 button and it switches. Not that it will right now, but it can is the point. Uh, you know what, I'm going to destroy this because I feel vindictive. And let's make some progress of the forward variety. You've got a fairly free reign to explore the levels, as well as you know, heading towards the objective it's telling you to. And it's a good idea because you're going to want to find power-ups. Such as this one. This is a gun power-up. Press the L1 button and you obtain it. Now, you get two different kinds of items, reloads and power-ups for each of your weapons. The reloads do what you'd expect and give you all your ammo back for that weapon. The power-ups, though, make the weapon better for a short amount of time. There's a flashing uh, yellow ammo count above the normal ammo count. That's the amount of upgraded ammo you have left. These are plasma mines. You have to jump over them with the triangle button. Just triangle allows you to jump in a thoroughly awkward fashion. It's not the most uh, agile walker in the world. That's an elevator. Use the control box to activate it. No shit, Sherlock. I'd rather gun down some dudes with my powerful mini gun. And you must press the action button again to activate the elevator to go up. There's another power up up here. What is it, you might ask? That's a heavy weapon police reloader. Reloads your heavy weapon. I haven't used that many, but I'm going to take it anyway, because this is only the first stage, so it's not particularly demanding. Watch it. They've got air support. Now, you have to be careful when dropping from um, from heights, as you will take full damage if you drop from too far. Case in point, if you jump off that bridge just there. Oh, I'm getting my ass handed to me right now. Take that. I have not played this game in quite a while. I will admit this. You have two options to get around the plasma mines here. You, I think you can jump over them, but that bridge gets in the way. Or you can do this. Change into the police hovercraft and then just drive over them. Because they're mines. They only affect the ground. Ha <laughs> ha! Mm, you fool! Do not underestimate the law. You will be brought in against your will. And police, police brutality will be exacted. This is the most useful power-up in the game because it restores your health. To fall. Subsequently, there are very few of them in the game. Now then, you can see there's this big generator blocking our progress. Gotta get past it. And this object over here, which we can target, will blow the shit out of it. One mortar should do it. No? Let's shoot it for a while then. 
<laughs> Explosions! There will be plenty of those as this game progresses, let me tell you. Now we're gonna wanna go this way. Alright, the gimmick here is that there are plasma barriers blocking our way into this area. Three of them, to be exact. There are three of these plasma generators that we need to blow up. Like that. Jesus. There are three generators in all, and they're indicated by the green dots on the radar. We found one fairly easily, but the other two, a little trickier to get to. Also, remember she told you about the sidestep button in the intro? Yeah, you're going to be using that one a lot. Because even in this first stage, a lot of shots come your way. Okay, here's our second generator. And a terrible camera angle to be shooting at it with. Secondary plasma gate down. Two plasma generators are down. One more to go. As you can see, I demonstrated the, um, the change target button there. We're now being instructed to rescue hostages. The way to do this is to blow this gate open. You're doing great, but don't underestimate Mysterio. Now, as you can see, there are blue dots on the radar now. Those represent the civilians. You can kill them, but you can't target them, so it's kind of hard. However, you can just walk into them, as you can with any on-foot infantry enemies you find. Because you're a giant robot mech, and they are squishy humans. Anyway, here's our next generator. Primary plasma gate down. Aragon security compromised. You drop the fence. Great going. I'm sticking around just to explain what this is. It's a little backup vehicle that's coming to rescue the civilians. We can just ignore it and let it get on with whatever it does. Which is actually nothing all the while we're in the level. But one could assume. The hostages are safe. Good going, X1 Alpha. You're welcome. That there is a bloody remain of a poor enemy who stood in our way. Quite why there are green bits in it, I'm not really sure. Anyway. Murdering! It will resume! And everything will explode because I will fire missiles at it! Terrible attempt at a British accent there, darling. Anyway. A lot of stuff explodes in this game. This wasn't if this wasn't already obvious to you. There is a power-up up there, but I can't remember how to get to it, so fuck it. I don't need no fucking power-ups. All I need is death. Death of my enemies. More mines. This time we are going to need to jump over them. Now, if you just press triangle when you're standing still, you sort of have a delayed jump that doesn't go anywhere near as far. Whereas if you run first and then jump, you go further and walk into a mine. Don't forget to do that. Very important that you do that. This statue has a weapon for some ungodly reason. And behind it, we will find more rockets and these pipes, which you can blow up but do nothing, so don't waste your ammo, basically. Now then, let's see what's up here. Yeah, two little turrets aren't going to stop me, buddy. I am the long arm of the law. Now down here is bugger all, so I don't know why I pointed it out. <laughs> this is the way we need to go now through this sort of canister tower thing. And through numerous enemies that they're standing up path. Destroying that kind of necessary to get past the mines. Jump! Yes, mechs can jump. Whoever told you that they couldn't? Liars, that's who. We're about to come up on our first sub-boss. Once we've killed his little turrety friends. I don't want turrets for friends. And neither should you. Anyway, you can see the green diamond is over here, and we can't really reach it. Right there. I've got a little surprise for you. Well, Mysterio oh, enemy has Whoa, this is a big one. brought in a big enemy, represented by the giant red triangle on our radar. It's sort of a weird UFO thing, and it shoots occasional red lasers. Other than that, though, it's pretty fucking weak. You just circle around it, hold the square button, keep pressing X, and eventually it will die. You can try and hit it with the mortar launcher, but it's pretty hard to do because it's not a static target. And the mortar is basically for static targets, given the way it works. Whereas the uh, the missiles and the minigun will lock on and hit anything, even if it moves. You can see there's sort of fire effects around it, so it is dying, even if it's not really got any visual cues. Right. There is a certain point where you can no longer damage it, you just have to wait until it reaches a certain point, because you don't actually blow this ship up yourself. The ship 
ship is auguring in. Watch it. Good work. Keep moving towards the observatory. It toasts the door for you. Temporary success. Yeah, temporary my ass, Mysterio. You're going down. Town. To jail. <laughs> In case that wasn't already obvious. Oh, by the way, I'm surrounded by turrets now. I love it when that happens. Wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is be surrounded by fucking wall turrets. And constantly spawning infantry. Die, a lot of you. There was one trapped in the wreckage, but I murdered him. More health required, I think. I'm getting my ass beat. Now, once again, we have a series of plasma barriers. It's a red plasma fence. Find the deactivation switch. They're all color-coded, and again, there's three of them. The first one is red, so we need this red switch up here. Fairly easy to find. It's denoted by a flashing green uh, dot instead of a static one. I don't know why, but that indicates that that's the switch you need. Also, there's some unfriendly graffiti on the wall there. No pigs! Pa! The Hornswogglers would disagree with your statement. Red gate down. Okay, you're going to want to use the lift to go back down because dropping, I think, will damage you from that height. It's a little unfair, but it does kind of make some sense when you think about it. You are a giant, god knows how many tons, mech uh, robot. Plummeting to the earth at a high velocity would probably smash you to pieces. And even if it didn't, it would turn you, the pilot, into marsh. Constantly spawning infantry. Lovely. Get used to that, by the way. It happens in quite a few of the stages. Here's an elevator with no activation switch, but I think you can bring it down just by pressing L1 near it. No? Yes. By standing under it, in fact. Let's ride it up. And we should be finding our second plasma switch. Or not, question mark. Ah, no, I remember. You get up here, and then you have to sort of awkwardly jump onto the roof. It's kind of tricky to do. You have to actually use the standing jump and not the running jump to make it up here. You can grab a special weapon power-up, which turns your mortar launcher into a sort of scatter launcher. Basically launches about three or four mortars instead of one. It's horrendously powerful if it lands on target, and that's why you only get 12 of them. I'm not entirely sure where I am now. I think I must be through the red gate, because you go through each gate to be able to unlock the next one. I have a feeling that that um, elevator up just got the power up and no more. <laughs> I will make ground pizza out of you. Okay, no, here we are. I'm just bumbling. Stop bumbling and enforce the law by blowing up a shed that spawns dudes. Which I don't seem to be able to lock onto, actually. But you can still hit it if you use the missiles, because they just go in a straight line if you're not locked onto anything. Anyway, here is our second plasma gate, the blue one. We need to find a blue switch. You can see there's a flashing dot over there on the map, so it's probably going to be that one. No, that's the green one. That comes later. Well, we're going to want the blue one, then. The blue one. The blue one's over there now. How do you get it? I must admit to not knowing. Not off the top of my head, anyway. Uh, Fumblage? What's that shooting me? Well, whatever it is, it dies now! Uh, oh, hang on, this is a reloader I haven't used yet. Let's investigate what its contents are. Maybe they'll be awesome. Aha, a heavy weapon power-up. 18 weapon specially power. upgraded missiles for us, and not for you. Holy shit, I really am bumbling. Okay, hang on, I've got an idea. Let's go back up here, because I'm pretty sure this is relevant to our situation. Come on. There you go. The camera's not great in this game. I mean, you, you can switch between a couple of different options as far as the uh, camera angle goes. But I find this one's generally the best for most gameplay. Because it's got a couple of compulsory ones uh, for certain sections of level. Now, I think what we were meant to do was jump up here. Yeah, there you go. Blue switch. That's the boss in there. That's where we're going in a minute. But you want to carefully gum, uh, come down from here, because as I said before, fall damage. It will happen, and it will make a mess of you. I've just wasted one of my super upgraded missiles, too. Not too happy about that. But here's the blue gate. Now absent, we can walk through, and lo and behold, here's a turret. Blow that up. Here's the green switch. Green gate down. Total security failure. That's it. The last fence is down. I can't wait to meet you in person. No, me either. 
And the boss is right through here. The giant plasma cannon extraordinaire. And the wait is over. He's got a lot of air support just floating around. You can take it out. I forget if it respawns. It may do. The upgraded missile uh, launches about three missiles, all of which home in on different targets. It's very handy for that. Anyway, the boss itself, the plasma cannon. You step up here, he'll start firing it at you. You can use these pillars as cover. I recommend you do it, because the plasma shots are pretty damaging. And here's where we're going to use our upgraded mortar to its fullest extent. Like these. Okay, the second cannon requires another scatter mortar. And a little more. Let's just grab this before we move on. Don't want to take my chances, really. The final stage of the boss is this central plasma cannon, surrounded by shielding. And holy shit, that exploded. This new plasma shot has an area effect if it hits you, or anything else onto that. You want to just keep throwing your upgraded mortars at it. It'll eventually take the shields out. You can then use your normal weapons as well, and it becomes a bit of a formality. Area secured. Nice job. Such as that. Scratch one perpetrator! <laughs> Not much of an, an arrest, but uh, what can you do when he's trying to kill you? Let's save our game! Uh, let's give it a meaningful name and not let the D-pad completely ruin it. If we could if we could avoid that, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately for me, this D-pad has it in for me, as we all know by now. It's a piece of shit, and I hate it. <laughs> Alright, let's just uh, cut that short right there. Malice, that'll do fine as a game name, I think. Saving game. There we go. Next time on Let's Play Future Cop LAPD, Stage 2, Zuma Beach.